So now that we understand how to calculate the um, or how to derive the distribution function and the density function for the first order statistic when we have uh, n independent uniform random variables, let's talk about the second order statistic. Okay, so let's call this v tilde and then two in brackets. So what is the second order stati uh, statistic? Very uh, obviously, it's if I take a sample from these n random variables, and then I look at the value of the second highest of these. Okay, that sounds an unusual thing to do, but um, it's going to play a role in auction theory because knowing uh, we're going to study something called second price auctions, where you win an auction uh, by bidding the highest, but you only pay the second highest. So you you lit you just have to beat the second highest person and pay what they were willing to offer. Um, so it's going to play an important role in auction theory. So uh, how do we go about analyzing this second order statistic? Okay, so the ideas are going to be this very similar. We need to know uh, if we're going to calculate the expected value of this second order statistic. What do we need to know? Well, we need to know its distribution function. Um, let's call that F, capital F subscript two. And we need to know its density function, lowercase f subscript two. So we need to know how to figure these things out. Um, so I won't go through all the analysis. It's, it's in the lecture notes and it might not be too entertaining to watch, but the I'll show you the big ideas on how how you get this. So when you think about this um, this distribution function f2 of v, remember what it's telling us. It's saying it's the probability that our second order statistic, the second highest of our sample, is less than or equal to v. Okay? Now, how could what are the, the ways in which something, the second highest value, could be less than V? Well, we could split it in two and say, well, one way is that all N values are less than this particular V. Okay, so if the highest of these is less than V, then the second highest is certainly less than V. So one way of saying, they say, well, what's the probability that the first order statistic is less than or equal to v. Okay, if this is true, then v, uh, the second order statistic is also less than v. Okay, now it's not the only way the second order statistic could be less than v. Clearly, we could have the first order statistic being higher than v and the second order statistic being less than or equal to. Okay, so how do we handle this case? Well, essentially, it's either they are all all of these values are less than v, or exactly one of them is above. So the probability, uh, I'll just write it in formally, exactly one of our um, of our n random variables, exactly one of these is greater than v. Okay. So these are the two ways in which our second order statistic could be less than any particular value. It could occur because all of the values are less than that particular value, or it could occur because only one, that is the highest of these, is, is above v and everything else is less than or equal to that value v. Okay, so we've already seen how to calculate this. This is just the first order statistics uh, distribution function. So we need to analyze this thing. What? How do we calculate the probability that exactly one of these um, particular values is less than, uh, is it's greater than v? Okay. So what we're going to do is consider each in turn. Okay. There's essentially n different ways in which exactly one of these could be greater than v. Okay. So consider. let's say, the case where, well, we'll just consider uh, v1, okay, v tilde 1, 
and then say, well, what's the probability that V tilde 1 is greater than V and um, all of the others, so V tilde 2 is less than or equal to V and so on and so on and so on, V tilde N is less than or equal to V, okay? So this is one case where V tilde 1 is the only um, value that is greater than um, than our value v, okay? Uh, so because we're dealing with independent random variables here, okay, so if the probability that v1, v tilde 1 is greater than v, is simply 1 minus the distribution function evaluated at v, okay? Because... The distribution tells you the probability it's less than or equal to v, so 1 minus this tells you the probability that it's above that value v. And then we're going to multiply this by the remaining, uh, so we're going to multiply it by f evaluated at v n minus 1 times, okay? So here is a one occasion where v1 is um is the highest the only one above v and everything else is below v that occurs with this probability okay now of course there are n different um n different ways in which this uh in which uh there could be exactly one value greater than or equal to v and so this thing here is going to be this n times, okay? So this is going to be n times uh, this thing that we calculated below, okay? Essentially, each n is saying exactly 1, so it's uh, exact, it, only v1 is greater than v, or only v2 is greater than v or only v3, and so on and so on, and we just add up n times for each of those in particular uh, or values, okay? Uh, so let's, we know that this is uniformly distributed, so let's just clean this up a little bit. I'll just grab another piece of card. So, now we've calculated that our distribution function for our second order statistic is equal to the distribution function for the first order statistic, f1 of v, okay, plus this other term, which was n times only one is higher and all the others um, are less than or equal to v. Okay, so this is where we got to so far. And now remember, we're dealing with a uh, uniform random variables, n independent uniform random variables on the interval 0 to 1. And so, as we've seen before, this was first term was simply v to the power n, and then plus n times, this is 1 minus v, multiplied by v to the power n minus 1, okay? So now we've got a much neater expression. I think in the lecture notes I wrote it as v to the power n plus n times v n minus 1 um, minus v to the power n, okay? So this is the distribution function for our second order statistic. Okay, so the, there was a few tricks involved, but now we've got it. Now we've got it. We can work with. We can calculate, for instance, the density function for our second order statistic, uh, which would just be the derivative of this. So if I differentiate, I would get n v to the n minus one plus n times n minus one v to the n minus two minus n v n minus 1. Okay, and I'm sure I can clean this up. Uh, 
I have the lecture notes nearby, so you can you can have a go at cleaning that up. Um, it's not entirely necessary, but it's it's nice to kind of try to express things in their simplest value. Okay, so now I've got an expression for the density function, and now it's a simple case if I want to calculate the expected value of the second highest value um, from our random sample of however many people walk into the room, I can just calculate the expected value of this uh, second order statistic in the way that we've seen before. I just take V and multiply it by its density function and vary V across that interval, okay? I won't go through all the steps because uh, they are in the lecture notes, but if you go through the steps, you will find that you get quite a nice formula, n minus 1 over n plus 1, okay? So in our last example, I think we got, the for the first order statistic, when n was, say, 19 people walked into the room, we calculated 0.95. Well, in this case, it would be 18 over 20, which is 0.9, okay? So um, that's how we calculate the expected value of the first order statistic and the second order statistic. And now we've got, I know these are new tools, so go over this and take your time and uh, kind of practice cleaning these up. But once we've got them ready, uh, we're then ready to start auction theory in our next part. So here is a summary of the results that we've obtained uh, in our analysis of order statistics so far. I won't read through all of these. The table is available in the lecture notes, but do go through each of these and make sure you understand how each of these were derived. And we're going to be using them as we analyze auctions next.